is going on? Welcome to the Dadwise Podcast. Um, I think you're really going to like this conversation today with Brett Pike from The Classical Learner. Uh, we talked about all things homeschool, uh, how to do it, why to do it. Uh, Brett's plan to take over the educational system. Uh, super fun conversation. Uh, but before we jump into it today, I wanted to remind you that uh, we've got a book, The 12 Rules for Dad Life. You can grab that. It's out now. This is what it looks like. Uh, and also, we just launched the Fatherhood Primer course. So you can go grab that. It's awesome. Take your fatherhood fathering to the next level. Uh, we cover marriage. We cover discipline, personal for your children, uh, how to connect with warmth to your children, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's a great it's a four-week course, um, and it'll help you take the next steps in your fatherhood journey. Um, and also the DadWise Academy. It's kind of two different pathways you can take. The Academy is 15 bucks a month, and it has a uh, monthly like mini course with a different focus to help you kind of uh, orient yourself for the month. Uh, we've got chats with chillins in there, um, helping you talk about different topics with your kids. And then you get every uh, course that I'm ever going to make for free. Also exclusive podcast episodes, all sorts of stuff. So the Academy, the monthly subscription uh, gets you all of that. Um, and I'd love for you guys to join that uh, community. Uh, it's an online community, so you can chat with other guys doing the same thing. Um, and I think that's all my, uh, my plugs for today. We're going to hop into the sponsor for this episode, and then we'll jump into it. All right. Hey, I'm here with Brett uh, from The Classical Learner. Brett, thanks for, thanks for hopping on with me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for people who aren't uh, familiar with you, will you just give us a little context of who you are, where you are in the world, how many kids you have? Yeah, well, I'm a father of two children. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old girl, and being nice. a parent is... This is a dad podcast, right? It's absolutely yeah. the best thing in the world. And, you know, it's so funny because I was just having a conversation with people online and someone had wrote, oh, I, I wish I had listened to my mother's advice when she told me that um, she would never bring children into this world. And I said, people huh. have gotten to the point where they are so defeated by victory, so privileged that they don't realize what they have. I think it's funny when, when people talk about like white privilege or this privilege, like you're an American living in 2023. <laughs> you have access in poverty to more material wealth than any king or queen in the history of the world. They used to fight wars <laughs> over salt. You have no idea how easy it is now. So I was like, it's the best time to raise children YouTube is the greatest teaching tool in the world. I'm like a rookie homesteader, but I go into every activity with the, <laughs> the knowledge of an expert because all I have to do is yeah. go on the computer and, and there's the information. And you have these people complaining about the world or privilege. It's like people have never had it better. But to answer your question, um, a few years ago, I, you know, I, I was a teacher and I didn't like what I saw from the system, so I decided to deviate, and I started writing children's books, the Cubs, yeah. the Bears, children books yeah. series. I'll, I'm going to do a shameless plug right here, right now. Do it. You know? I love it. Free speech. Yeah, yeah. Right? The Bear from Jekyll Island on the banking system, the right to bear arms, really cool stuff. Yeah, um, yeah I love so it. I, you know, I started with that, and um, that took off. I did very well. I blew up on social media, and I said, you know what? I'm just going to rebuild I'm kind of a dreamer. I'm going to rebuild the whole damn education system. And I, I started it. a homeschool company, and we're three years later. We're 18 months into the curriculum development side of that. And yeah. um, our membership has been just exponential. I've been blessed. I'm bringing yeah. in. I just, I just hired a guy who worked at NASA, and he's helping me okay. put together a STEM curriculum so we're doing some oh, really big nice. things and, and yeah that's that's me that's who i am yeah that's awesome i was just checking through i was reading through your your instagram is that where you're most active is your instagram and your reels and stuff that's where i found you um yeah, but i was i was oh, just on, reading through some of the co i was just reading through some of the comments on some of your stuff and you deal with all sorts of fun uh opinions once you like your andrew jackson video had some fun comments on the thread and uh you're just in the thick of a a a pretty heated cultural discussions <laughs> on yeah. a daily basis it looks like but yeah, yeah. You know, Andrew Jackson's such an interesting historical figure and 
part of what I do in my homeschool community is I teach history. So yeah. I love making these videos on historical figures. And Jackson, I mean, he became a war hero in yeah. Well, where, where do you start with Jackson? When he was a little boy <laughs> during the American Revolution, he was 14 years old, and he was captured by the British, and yeah. he wouldn't comply with them, so they beat him and gave him permanent scars on his face and his hand that he carried with him throughout the rest of his life. And while he was a prisoner, and the British guards had rounded up all of these people, Andrew Jackson starts reciting the Declaration of Independence right in front of them. <laughs> and he, he's this young guy. And yeah. then he would get his revenge because in the War of 1812, so, you know, you fast forward a few decades, he's yeah. now General Andrew Jackson. And the War of 1812 was actually over. The, huh. the British had um, agreed to leave the North American continent. We, the America, we won the war again, kicked their butts yeah. again. You know, the British, they suck, you guys. <laughs> Chads. No, you're not Chads. So, but the word didn't get out yet to the British military. You know, they couldn't pick up the huh. phones. The war was actually already over, but there was the last I battle in, in New Orleans, huh. right? And Andrew Jackson um, wiped the floor with the British. And at that victory, the world realized, they said, wow, America really is a power. Look what they just did in New Orleans. And he became yeah. a war hero. Huh. He then becomes the president of the United States. He's at his inauguration. A man insults his wife. He steps down in the middle of his presidential inauguration and punches the man in the face. <laughs> this is what I want from a leader. This is what we need from men. Another guy uh, yeah. insults his wife. <laughs> he challenges him to a duel. So they go up. They walk. They turn around. They shoot. Andrew Jackson gets shot in the chest. You ready for this? He gets a bullet in his chest. Yeah. He stays on his feet, fires his shot, and kills the guy. And he lived the rest of his life with that bullet lodged his chest. Just and in he, there. I got to me. He becomes president. And then he becomes one of the most impactful presidents in the history of the United States because he took on the banks. And yeah. the second bank of the United States was um, – they had a charter that was coming to an end. And he refused yeah. to sign the charter. There was an assassination attempt on his life. The guy missed him. He takes his cane out. He beats the guy that just fired two <laughs> shots at him with his cane. Right? So this, and then he, um, he balanced the budget. He paid off yeah. America's debt in full. This is an amazing historical figure. Now, yeah. he, also, he also had slaves. He also yeah. did the Trail of Tears, and he marched the Native Americans off their territory across the country. And I teach right. that stuff, too, but... Everyone knows that stuff. So that's right. not an interesting video for social media. So I get these trolls right. come on like, yeah, you piece of trash. You say you <laughs> teach real history, but you don't teach children about the Trail of Tears. Like I obviously teach them about the Trail of Tears, but so does every right. school in America. So why would I make right. a video on that? Right. I've never heard that other stuff. That's great history. That's, that's fun. I love that. Uh, do you have a history or uh, a history degree? Is that your major or... What did you go to school for? Yeah. It seems I, like I you're well-versed in history. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got a bachelor's degree in history education. They didn't teach me any okay. of the good stuff. Like, I knew about the Trail of Tears. <laughs> I didn't know so much about the banks back then. But yeah. I got a bachelor's degree in history education, okay. um, master's degree in special education. Okay. And, you know, I wanted to be that, that teacher that made the difference. And then I was like, screw that. I'll make the real difference. We're just going to flip <laughs> the table and we're going to do it on our own because – you know, they're trying to turn your boy into a girl, your girl into a boy. They got a whole lot of stuff going on in those schools. Keep them, keep them away. How long were you in the public school system? Did you teach at all or did you sniff it before you got into it? I was, I was in the public school system throughout um, my college years, my student teaching, okay. and then I actually got hired by an early intervention agency and I worked in early okay. intervention for about a decade um, which okay. is working with the younger population. But the reason I worked in the early intervention rather than the um, with the older kids in the public schools is when I was in there, yeah. I hated it. Um, yeah. I, hmm. you know, I remember I was teaching um, a ninth grade global class. And keep okay. in mind, I'm in an inner city in New York, right? So yeah, okay. it's all black kids, right? So yeah. I'm in this class and I, you know, I say, hey, um, show me Africa on a map. 
And at first right. I just thought, you know, they're kids, all right, they're not interested right now. Um, yeah. But then I realized it wasn't that they didn't want to tell me where Africa was. It was that an entire classroom, we're talking about 30 children, yeah. ninth graders, couldn't show me Africa on a map. And I realized right then, I said, wow, this system's really broken. How have they gotten yeah. to me if they don't know that? Um, that's a continent. Then, that's not even a country. That's a that's a big chunk of land. <laughs> it's like right in the middle. Just it, if you take a wild a guess, one. you'll probably hit Africa. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big one. You know, yeah. there's so many. I mean, I'd be in teachers' lounges, and I mean, they're they're calling the children dumb. I, I remember I had this one. I was teaching twelfth grade economics, and yeah, um, I had this one girl who struggled academically, and she was in yeah. my twelfth grade economics class, and she was doing fantastic. And yeah, huh. it's difficult stuff. Um, I'm making an economic curriculum right now, by the way, financial. Yeah. But um, so this girl struggled and she's doing great for me. So uh, we're in the teacher's yeah. lounge. And I'm sitting there with all these veteran teachers and they start making fun of her. They're like, she's so dumb. I was like, how, how have you done what you've done? And this was the craziest part. This was the craziest yeah. part. I looked them straight in the eyes and I said, I believed in her and I let her know I believe in her. Yeah. And this was like shocking to them. And I was like, wow, you guys all <laughs> stuck. You guys shouldn't be doing what you're, you're doing. Yeah. So you got out and then three years ago you started Classical Learner and that's an online platform, a, a monthly membership. It looks like I did a little bit of research on you, but what do people yeah. get when they, when they uh, jump in with you on Classical Learner? Yeah. So originally... Homeschools Connected, which is our, our private homeschool uh, community okay. and our curriculum. Um, okay. Originally, it was just a community of like-minded people, homeschool parents. They could come together, bounce ideas off of each other. And then January 1st of last year, that's when I decided to ramp it up. And I said, I'm just going to take down the school system. And I started building out curriculum. And we produced at least one lesson plan, unit study, or video course every day since January 1st of last year. So now we have a ton. We have yeah, a ton of material. That's amazing. Great. Yeah. You know, and I, I mapped that out of my head too. I was like, how am I going to do this? I was like, well, yeah. if I do at least one a day. I just hold myself to that responsibility. Yeah. Then a year and a half from now, I'll have a lot. And, and sure enough, yeah. that's a good lesson to young men, by the way. Slow right? steady. Yeah. That, that goes with everything. You know, you want to you wanna be strong. You want to have muscles where you lift weights once a day and you build up. Yeah. You want to. Um, be a, an expert on something. Well, you start reading about it an hour every day. You just, yeah. you got to sculpt yourself into the young man or the young woman that you envision yourself being. Um, and right. we all have the ability to do that. Um, so anyway, I started building out this curriculum. And um, now people that join, they get access to all of the lesson plans, all of the yeah. unit studies. And we could talk about what those are and all yeah. of the courses that we put out as well as our community of um, thousands of people that have accumulated literally thousands of years of homeschool experience. Um, yeah. It's just a great community. You get access to all of that, but the only negative is it's a little exclusive. Um, okay. You could only join if you could afford $15 a month. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. steep. <laughs> uh -huh. No, yeah, that's very doable. I mean, public school is a bit more expensive than that. They take uh, my uh, my property taxes go to public school, and it's like six thousand dollars every year. I'm like, what? I homeschool my kids, so I'm like, why can't I just keep that? You know, and like invest that into our stuff. But uh, that's not an option at this point. So. Uh, what are, what are some of like the biggest, um, like apprehensions people have if they're like on the fence about homeschooling and they're not quite sure about it? What do you hear from people who are kind of just thinking through that process and, and not ready to jump into it yet? Yeah. Well, you get the people who worry they're not qualified. They think, right. how can I replicate public school? Well, you know, why would you want to replicate public school? That's <laughs> the whole point. They don't teach anything of value. I mean, I, I've been building out a financial literacy curriculum for elementary yeah. school students um, over the last month, month and a half, and I've had a joy doing it. Yeah. And as I'm putting this together, you're just laughing like, who is the rocket scientist? Because, right, they presumably the Department of Education has their pretentious ass meeting. Sorry, my language. And they get together and say, oh, you know, what do the children really need to learn? And 
and one person raises their hand like, you know, I think we should teach them about um, assets and liabilities, about expenses, income. And they're like, no, no, that's not a good idea. Does anyone else have any ideas? I think we should teach them to chop off. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go for that. Let's go for that, right? So that's what you're dealing with. with the po- so you, don't worry about that. You are qualified. In fact, yeah. the best teachers I know are all homeschool mothers. They're incredible people. And yeah. you learn with your kids. And the best part about it is the homeschool community, it's, it's built out for this. The curriculums are built so that parents could follow them, children could follow them. They're yeah. really simple. Um, the, the other thing you get is, oh, but I'm worried about the socialization. I say, right. hey, yeah, listen, if you want to socialize your kid, you're right. You go put them in school, put a mask on their face, and tell them if they get within six feet of Johnny, grandma's going to die. That sounds like good socialization to me. Or, or you can do what they did for the majority of human history because – Believe it or not, homeschooling is not the new experiment. It's right. public school, which the Rockefellers took over, and they, hmm. we could talk about that. They um, based off of the Prussian education system in the early 1900s, and it's been a massive failure. But to socialize your kid at home, it's really easy. You just you make sure they get out into the world. My children homeschool; right. they're not home right now. You don't hear them. You don't see them. Yeah. they're out in the world. They're doing right. things. Um, they're in baseball, they're in karate, um, yeah. they're having play dates with friends, they're at the park, they're in town being social, and sure enough, <laughs> if you are social, you'll be social. So Yeah, I just read a book, uh, it's about peer orientation, I think it's called Keep Them Close, and it's about how basically kids are raising each other now, and that's not good, and they have all these different stats about how kids need to be connected to their parents and other adults. And they don't really mention homeschooling as an option in that book, which was interesting because it seemed like the logical conclusion to me. It was like, hey, let's – kids are just so segmented out of our out of our uh, world these days. Like parents and kids are all uh, separated in church and school and sports and whatever. Um, but, yeah, having kids raising each other is not the ideal situation. Um, so if – if a parent wants to jump into homeschooling and they, they're like, I'm not very smart, I'm not very educated, it's just like, go for it, learn as you go, and uh, find a good curriculum. Uh, do you recommend everyone do, like, what is your style of homeschooling? Because I know there's like Montessori and there's all sorts of different categories that you can do with homeschooling. What are, can you kind of break those down for us and talk about where people might fit in and what might be best for them? Yeah, well, every every family that's new to homeschooling should look into Montessori. They should look in to Charlotte Mason. They should look in yeah. to classical education. They should look into unschooling. This is like what I okay. call the core four. Now, me, okay. myself, I actually take the parts that I like of all of those different philosophies yeah. and turn them into a Frankenstein monster of eclectic homeschooling because... <laughs> You don't have to limit yourself. Like Maria Montessori was an amazing woman, albeit she was a communist, but I'm willing to look past that because her <laughs> philosophies and education were very solid. Charlotte yeah. Mason was another, she's not just a, a curriculum, she was a woman, she had amazing ideas about education. Yeah. She actually um, came up with this idea of these, these amazing living stories where children mm. learn history, for example, but they're actually they're reading a story as if they're following a historical character. And yeah. it's like it's living, it's alive, it's vibrant. They do the same thing with math, um, which I love because my children love yeah. stories. So we, you know, we love using the Charlotte Mason type of stuff. I actually implement yeah. a lot of that in I write a lot of stories um, as part cool. of our homeschool curriculums that the children yeah. can read, including for math. Um, Charlotte Mason believed that your children should be taught responsibility through chores, that yeah. um, they should have set chores that they're supposed to do every day, which I agree with too because personal responsibility is, it's really the pillar of if you're going to have a good life or not, if you're going to be, if you're responsible or not, right? right? Because you could take me and put me in any situation and put me in anywhere in the world. You could put me in a dark pit, but my mindset will never change. That right. I'm in the situation I'm in, but it's my job to claw my way out of here. And that's okay, it, yeah, right? Yeah. And 
we can teach this to our children from a young age. I learned that because my father is a United States Marine. And yeah. I mean, he, he's a lot harder on me than I am on my kids. I mean, he, <laughs> he was waking me up in, early in the morning, making me run. <laughs> but he's kicking my butt. But, I, you know, I look back and I'm grateful for that now. Yeah. Um, you have Montessori, which is this beautiful philosophy of allowing children to learn through play and setting yeah. up their environment so that as they're doing the things that they want to do, they can learn. They can use blocks to learn math. They can um, yeah. painting and art. When you're in the kitchen, you could have a special stool that they could step up on and a special knife that won't cut their finger if they slip. And yeah. they could just get involved. It's the Montessori style. It's beautiful. You have um, classical. You should read, read Maria Montessori and Charlotte Mason. They wrote all about it themselves. Yeah. Um, classical education. Um, there's this book, The Well Trained Mind by Susan Wise Bauer. Okay. Don't read that one first. They're a little intimidating for a new. <laughs> She's a little intense. A little <laughs> read that one last. But okay. classical education, um, which is really a, a type of education that elite private schools have used dating back thousands of years, this philosophy yeah. of. Um, you break learning into three phases, and I also implement this into what we're doing. Yeah. Grammar, logic, and yeah. rhetoric. The grammar stage hmm. is up until about fourth or fifth grade, depending on where your child is. Um, you know, you could judge that for yourself. But yeah. in the grammar stage, you're really trying to teach them that words have meaning, right? Mm -hmm. That definitions are important. Um, yeah to give them a building block. But then when they get to about fifth grade in classical education, they move on to the logic phase. And that's where mm. you start to teach them um, logic 101, right? Dialectic, mm. where you start to teach them um, the logical fallacies. What is a straw man argument? What is um, an ad hominem argument, right? How yeah. different arguments and logical fallacies so that you could watch, if you're watching the news, and you say, you know, <laughs> the one man made a point and the other man just said, yeah, well, you're a big piece of shit, <laughs> but, but you're, you're a conspiracy Did, theorist. You're, yeah. Did you're, he answer the actual question or not? You're yeah. literally Hitler. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> literally not <laughs> true. I can't tell you how many times I'm accused of being literally Hitler. I'm like, right. job, I'm being accused of being literally Hitler so much, I'm starting to like the guy. I'm like, oh, he must have been all right. I seem like a good guy. <laughs> It's a joke. It's a joke. I don't think it. <laughs> so, um, some of you recognize the, these arguments, yeah. this, this nonsense, the nonsense machine that is our politicians, that is the media, right? Um, so yeah. that's the logical fallacies and um, how to structure things logically and um, to identify that if you have a worldview, but then there's something logically inconsistent about it, that you have to go back, reevaluate and reconstruct that worldview until it's logically consistent. Because if there's a contradiction, yeah. something's off and that's okay. One of the best things we could do in life is be wrong. I always tell my students, yeah. I am, I'm wrong all <laughs> the time. I'm wrong all the time. There's yeah. like people on social media like, you got that wrong, you idiot. I'm like, okay. Oh. Probably, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you never get anything wrong. Brilliant yeah. comment section, man. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then the third phase moving into high school is rhetoric, which is yeah. really the art form of connecting with people emotionally and hmm. persuading them to be on, on your side. Um, the, the examples that people are most familiar with are political. So hmm. examples um, of this would be um, Barack Obama's um, campaign, Hope and Change, right? He's not yeah. really saying anything. You can make that into whatever you want it to be. Sure. He's able to connect with people emotionally. Donald Trump comes along. We're going to make America great again. Well, what does that yeah. mean? That's the same thing as hope and change. It's in your mind. Okay, America, this yeah. is great. This is what it's going to be. It's right. this persuasive type of speech that politicians use. Hmm. Um, uh, another example with Trump would be uh, we're going to build a wall. Right now, a lot of politicians <laughs> say that we're going to secure the southern border, right? Right. It doesn't have the same rhetorical power, the same persuasion. Right. When you say we're going to build a wall, yeah. people can visualize a wall, it, yeah. right? This Concrete, is yeah. 
rhetorical speech that the politicians, pretty much everything they say is rhetorical. They almost never talk <laughs> in logic. And right. you, hey, I don't blame them. The people are so dumb, they just go for it. And so, um, so this is grammar, logic, and rhetoric. Susan Wise, Bauer, um, yeah. the well-trained mind. And then there's unschooling, yeah. which is my personal favorite type of education, yeah. which is the idea that your child has interests yeah. and you can ask them what their interests are follow that interest and then use what they're interested in to teach them the type of things that you want them to learn. Um, sure. I was at, I was at, um, I was at my, my boy's, um, karate dojo, his, um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we're at the dojo yesterday and I was yeah. hanging out with the kids and this one kid was telling me all these stories like zombies, right? And he's like, the bees are zombies and he's crushing it. And he's so creative. And I'm like, wow, this is great. You should make this into a book. And he's like, no, no, I'm going to make it into a video game. And I'm, okay. like, I'm like, all right, that's awesome. He's like, yeah, when I'm older. I was like, why would you make it when you're older? He's like, what do you mean? He's like, why don't you do make it, it into a video game now? He's like, how do I do that? I was like, well, you'd probably have to learn coding. And I took out my phone and I showed him Codable and CodeSpark. I was like, these two apps yeah. right here that your parents get on your phone, they'll yeah. teach you how to code. You can make your own <laughs> game. And he's like, yeah. what? So then I'm sitting down with him. I'm like, I'm like, all right, all right. But if you're, if this is going to be your game, you got to map it out. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I write children books. I'm telling you right you now. You got yeah. <laughs> You got to write down. You got to say, le you know, you're going to break your game into levels. Write down level one, two, three, four through 11. Yeah. And then map out what happens on each level. And then I'm yeah. sitting down with him while my son's doing karate and I'm just talking to this kid. And he starts <laughs> mapping out this game he's going to make. He draws yeah. a whole cover. And I'm like, you yeah. know, that cover is awesome. You know what you should do? When you go home tonight, download this app, Canva. And yeah. you can actually take this design and you could get it on the computer and make it beautiful. You could put slime and ooze on it. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you think about it and you're like, you're teaching your child there. They're telling stories, the art of story. You could get into the yeah. structure of stories itself. Um, you're teaching them writing, publishing, organizing, right. um, graphic design, art, um, coding, all of these amazing skills. <laughs> and all you did was this crazy idea of, hey, this child's obsessed with this. Why don't we just guide him? Go with it. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's ready to go on and start a small business when he graduates from high school. Or he's already got one going. He's got apps developed. He's ready to rock. Yeah. He's crazy. He was like, this was seven. He's like, oh, he's like, can I give the game away for free? And I said, yeah, you can, but why would you do that? He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's like, you're not wrong. I'm making money. <laughs> wrong with that. Sell ads on it if it's free or like upgrade the skins. Yeah, that's how uh, Fortnite did theirs. It was free, but you could buy a million things inside of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, following the kid's interest is something that is not possible in public school, right? Because you're going through week by week, month by month, a predetermined curriculum. Um, so is that something like if my kid was interested in dinosaurs, I could go onto your site and find a dinosaur uh, curriculum and then just work through it with them? Do you have that much built out I haven't right now done dinosaurs yet. No dinosaurs yet. All right. No, no, I haven't got the dinosaurs yet. We'll get All there. Right. But, um, you know, if your son's interested in dinosaurs, it's the same concept with the unschooling. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you just follow that interest and you could start by drawing dinosaurs. You can start yeah. going to dinosaur museums and you just do one thing after another. And each time an opportunity comes up, you just point out, well, did you know that yeah. you can do this? Right. Um, right. you know, why don't we, and I don't know if a metal detector would be good, but right. We could actually start digging ourselves and looking for things yeah. and you just start using that interest to teach the things you want them to learn yeah. and use it to teach skills. You could have them build a website completely around dinosaurs. Yeah. Right? There's so many different things you can do by following the interest of a child. And it's not about that interest. It's about using it to teach them the skills that could then translate to whatever else they want to do as their right. interests change later in life.